Hi, my name is Ron. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland. Today I'm going to show you a lime Venetian finish uh, with a product that we simply, it's called Grisello, and it's a traditional lime-based plaster from Italy. The uh, Grisello plaster um, is a polished lime. It's how it would be traditionally referred to. Um, it comes in a tint base and you have to tint it. In this case, I've tinted it to a nice, uh, I want to say maybe a soft khaki. Uh, and I used the compatible, lime compatible tints. A couple things about lime plaster. Now, Venetian plaster is not all the same. Acrylic is nothing like lime, and lime is nothing like acrylic. They're two totally different things. Just because they say Venetian plaster on a can, it doesn't mean they're anything alike. So you gotta really pay attention to what you're using and read the labels and literature about the product. Lime-based Venetian plaster, in this case, is gonna require the proprietary base coat. I know people have done things here and there. They have their little tricks and whatever. However, what if I'm charging a certain price to get a finish and it's going to be done a certain way and I have to stand behind it and warranty it? I am not going to cheap out and skimp just to make a save a couple bucks and take a shortcut because it could come back and haunt me in the end. In this case, this pri pri primer for this finish is a lime. It's what they simply just call it a quartz primer. And you roll it on. With a, uh, in this case, I used a half inch nap roller. I put two coats on, sanded it smooth a little bit because it has a little grit to it. And the reason it has a grit to it is this quartz primer goes under many all line products from this company. Uh, it can go under the Marmarino, the Travertino, the Grisello. We use it under the lime paint. So I'm using, I rolled on two coats of the quartz primer, sanded it nice and smooth, and I have my Grisello plaster ready to go. Now, for this, I need two tools. I need my high quality stainless steel Venetian trowel. This is a really good trowel. This one is about $60. And same thing with the putty knife, the high quality stainless steel putty. Um, these two, well, not just these two, but I have trowels that only see my fine, my fine polished plasters. I don't use my texture trowels for polished plasters. I don't use my Marmarino trowels for polished plasters because those products have aggregates in them that'll scratch these trowels. And when you go across this real smooth finish, it'll scratch it and you got to work really hard to get it out. So I keep a dedicated set of tools strictly for Grisello plasters or polished lime. Okay, like I said, here we are, primed, ready to go. I'm going to get a little bit of plaster on my trowel. Now, certain things to remember. This is lime in its wet form. It is caustic. So if you get it on your skin, go rinse your, wash your skin off. Be careful of your eyes when you're mixing it. If you're mixing this in a five gallon bucket, put some safety glasses on and it doesn't hurt to wear some gloves because it will burn. It'll give you like a mild sunburn if it sets there too long. So keep that in mind. The first thing I'm going to do is come across the top where my wall would be and it'll work down. That's what the patty's for. Okay. Intersecting wall, come across like so. Don't worry, you can see the primer showing through. I'm going to do this tr the traditional way, two to three thin coats, because I want it like a piece of glass. I want that mirror reflection here. You can kind of hear that that primer's got that aggregate in it, a little texture to it. You can hear it. Hear the difference? It's okay. It's not a big deal. We want that versus a, a smooth finish paint because this way it grabs the plaster and holds it in place. Smooth finishes are like an eggshell or satins or lotion. They won't work for one. And two, if you tried it, if they did work, the plaster is going to slip and slide across where this just grabs it and goes. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure I'm working wet down into dry, meaning I'm going to start in my wet area and come down. And every so often I'll do just a couple cleanup passes. There's a little bit of stuff here I don't like. Now the variation in color is going to come from thicker spots of plaster or heavier concentrated areas of plaster, thicker versus thinner areas. I'm not worried that my primer is peeking through. It's okay. Just need a little bit more for this corner and that'll be it for this. Now the thing about lime and some acrylics, 
this is going to dry 50% lighter than what we see right here. Well, 40%, 40 to 50% lighter. It depends on the color. This is a soft color. This is probably going to dry about 30 to 40%, meaning when you're mixing a bucket up to a custom color in your shop or on the project, always make a dry sample first. And if you made a sample in your shop and submitted the, the uh, sample board to a client, or you just haven't had time to get around to doing your own project, make yourself another sample really quick to make sure that your notes that you cap on this custom formula are exactly the same from three months, four months ago to today, so that it, things change a little bit. So I'm going to let this dry, and then we're going to come back and do our second application. I'll see you in just a little bit. Okay, obviously we're dry because we're back. You can see it's well, you're not going to see just yet. Second coat, clean trial. Second coat is going to go in exactly the same way for this application. And this is what I was talking about the difference between wet and dry plaster. See how much different the two are? Much different. Yeah. See how different the two are? All right. So like I said, it dries considerably different. The other thing you're going to notice is that the second coat goes on a little easier. I always say the first coat's a little tougher in the sense that it likes to stick to itself better than it does the primer. It just goes on a little easier over itself than it does go over the primer. All right. And you don't have to kill it. You don't have to do this like you, own, you see on these other things that are out there. And a traditional polished plaster finish is a smooth, a smooth application of plaster. You can do all kinds of different things, multiple colors, textures, whatever, but the traditional polished plaster finish was smooth and highly polished. I prefer a trial. A lot of people like those little, I don't know, scraper spatulas. They're nice to do decorative finishes. There's no way I'm going to do an entire wall with that. It's just too time consuming. Um, well, it's one, it's time consuming, but two, I'm just not going to do it for lime. If you want a traditional lime finish, this is how I would do it. And there's our second coat, nice and simple. And I should have showed you, I'm not even using that much plaster. This plaster does go quite a ways. Um, it is very paper thin. If you put this on too thick, it's going to crack. And it's an uncontrollable crack. It just cracks everywhere. If I put a hair dryer and hold it in one spot too long, it's going to crack. An uncontrollable crack. And it's also not the kind of, it's not a good crack. Um, it's going to lose its adhesion type of crack because it's not drying to itself. Now, the cool thing about lime, is that you can do different things, so many different things. You can layer into it, you can paint into it. Uh, say you're doing marmorino, you could do some fresco techniques where wet into wet. I can layer, I blend my colors wet into wet. Uh, when I burnish this, I'm definitely going to burnish it when it's in humid, not wet, versus dry. A lot of people, um, not a lot of people, but you'll see, thing, you'll see things out there where people wait till plasters are, are dry and then they sand it. Anything can get shiny when you sand it simply because you're making it smoother. Um, a, and this is a real good lime. This is like the, this is probably, this is like the Rolls Royce of lime plaster. This stuff is smooth and creamy. It's not too thin. It's not runny. It's not too thick where it's like peanut butter. It's just that perfect consistency that you're looking for. Cool thing about lime with a Grisello, and I'm not going to touch on it today, but you can do layers. Like, let's say you have a bathroom shower stall. Uh, you can do your cement board, two coats of marmorino, two coats of grisello, and then your sealer, and you can put it in a shower stall. So if it's good enough in a shower stall, you can also put it outside. Remember, a lot of these products, these are, these are, this product is made in Italy. Um, so a lot of these products have been used on the exterior buildings for decades, centuries. It's stuff that's been around for a very long time. If it holds up in the, you know, the climate of Italy, in the various climates of Italy, it's going to hold up here in some of our climates, maybe not so well up north, where you get lots of snow, lots of freezing. It'll hold up if done right, but it, that's the other thing, done right, meaning done right from the beginning, not just slapped on top of a surface over, that you already have. You know, you've got to build the, you build the wall knowing that you're going to, how you're going to finish it. Um, a lot of people tell you that lime prevents mold and mildew. That's true. 
Uh, they say it's a breathable plaster. That's true as well, but if the surface underneath of the wall, whatever it's mounted to doesn't breathe, it doesn't matter if this breathes or not. I mean, that's just the way it is. Okay, you can kind of start to see it dry. So I'm going to do a third coat with this one because I don't know if you can see it there, but I can still see some of my base white showing through, and I don't want that. I just want a nice, even, fairly uniform color, I mean, in the sense that I know my color is just soft khaki. I don't want to see any primer poking through, so that means I need one more coat. All right, so and we're almost dry. I mean, it does dry kind of quickly. I'm not going to put a lot of pressure on it because I could really damage it. It's not that dry. So let it dry, come back just a bit, and we'll see, uh, get this third coat, and then we'll finish this off. Okay, here we go. Third and final coat, and then we're going to burnish. I'm going to apply this very thin and tight. No sanding in between coats. I prefer not to sand because remember this is lime and when you sand it, it gets air, dust becomes airborne. Uh, of course, you're gonna be wearing a dust mask, but it's gonna get in somebody's house or somebody's office in the ventilation system. So if you take your time and do the right technique, there is no need to sand at all. Third and final coat, real tight, like I said. And this is where I'm gonna burnish. And when I burnish, I'm gonna be able to get that real nice high gloss, that mirror-like sheen. This color is almost on the verge of a plastic or Lexan trial. It's so light that when I burnish, even with a high quality stainless steel, it could leave black gray marks. So hopefully I'm not pressing my luck. I don't think I am. I've used it enough times to know, but always keep that in the back of your mind. And I mean, I'm putting this on thin. I'm not killing it, meaning I'm not muscling this to death. I don't have to crank, grind on it to get it to compress or to apply it. A board this size, I'm probably lucky if I use the amount of plaster that takes up the same area so, uh, as like a uh, tablespoon. Okay, gather up coat, just kind of check, make sure I got no junk hanging off. I'm going to take my rag, and it's right where I left it, imagine that. And I'm gonna come right behind what I just did, no break, start my compression. For my compression, I'm gonna be almost, probably like a 20 degree angle on that blade. And a moderate pressure and just go across that surface like so and if I'm doing it the right way we're not going to get anything on the blade this is old stuff I didn't take my time to clean it off but over here see that here we go nothing I'm not pulling plaster off I'm not moving plaster around I'm compressing what I have and as this dries you're going to start to see the variation. Look at all this cool stuff that was there. We didn't know it was there. Now we see it. So I'm just going to take my time, compress a little bit. I'm going to hit it from a couple different angles. Even though it's smooth to the touch, but the hand, it's not so smooth for the trial. And it's going to hit some different areas differently like this reason this is darker the plaster is thicker here than it is here it's thicker here than it is here so my blade is going to ride on those high spots and it's not going to hit that low spot so that's why I'm going to just change my angle of attack if you go into it too soon meaning it's more wet than humid you're going to get some you're going to tear the plaster it's going to lift and it's going to rip up on you I'm just gonna use my hand here to stabilize this easel. Okay. And you'll know when it's not right because if it's too damp and you're compressing, you're gonna get bubbles. If you see a bubble, stop immediately. 
Now, I know you're going, well, that's a small area, and he was able to go back into it pretty quickly. Yep, and what I do is I usually have a helper uh, when I'm doing a very large wall. I'll have somebody going behind compressing as I apply the plaster or vice versa. So, and I never really have one person helping apply the plaster on the same wall because, you know, even though we work the same pretty well, it's hard to have the same motion. And if we're going to have a gigantic wall and two or three of us need to work, we're going to sit and practice on smaller walls and make sure everybody's using the same basic application because I don't want to see one guy going in big circular patterns and another guy going in nice controlled patterns or tight patterns. But you can see how shiny this stuff is getting. I mean, you can almost see your, I mean, you can see your reflection in this. I love lime. This is something, the way it feels, it's smooth. I mean, acrylic just doesn't feel this way. It doesn't just, it doesn't have this look. It's just very luxurious. And now finishing it, there's so many different things that you can do. I, I mean, you can leave it natural. If you leave it natural, no wax. It's going to be water resistant. Uh, the thing is, it's not going to be stain resistant. resistant. Sorry about that. No, it doesn't want to work today. Um, so let's say you put this in a dining room or a kitchen and somebody spills red wine on it. It's going to stain it. It's going to repel the moisture, but the stain's there. Same with like grape juice, soda. You're going to see stain marks in a kitchen. If you put grease, cook with grease, it splashes up. You're going to see that. So make sure you keep all that in mind. Uh, acceptable top coats, of course, is the Italian polishing wax. It's going to change it. It's going to make it shinier. It's going to give it that waxy feel to it. I mean, if you feel this right now, it just, there, I don't even know how you describe it. There's something about it. Just like, it's like touching a piece of stone. It's been highly polished. That being said, somebody's going to go, can I put this on the countertop? Sure can. Can you put it on the floor? Yes, you can. Um, but you got to do the right preparation and the right top coats. And that's going to vary depending on application. So if you're doing a floor, the best thing to do is shoot an email over or ask down in the messages below. I try to answer everything as quickly as I can. And I will, based on, tell me what your location is so I can figure out who might have what if I don't have something or if you don't want to pay to have it shipped all across creation. Um, all right, that's about all I can get out of this guy. Okay, so we're back. Of course, it's dry because we're ready to move on. I want to just kind of give you a, a glimpse of how shiny this is. It's really hard to get a camera to give you that. Ooh, there you go. Pretty shiny. All right. So you can either leave as is, or we can play with some variations. And one of those variations is going to be some wax. I'm going to take a piece of tape. So I want you to be able to see the difference before and after. Just taking and uh, getting some of the stickiness off of this. And let's put this guy like this. All right. Clean trowel. And this is the bronze wax. Straight out of the bucket. Okay. Don't need a whole lot. This stuff smells so good. I'm not being sarcastic. It really smells nice. And we're going to do this. Is that what I want to do? That's exactly what I want to do. I want to do this bottom side. And what this is going to do is enhance our plaster. It is a metallic bronze. So it's going to have little hints of metallic shimmer to it. And like my whack or my plaster, I'm going to start from my wet to my dry. You got to be careful because this stuff, I mean, if you have a very busy, sloppy looking plaster, this is going to show it. It's going to enhance everything that you've already have done. It goes on so smooth. It's very creamy.
And this is a uh, non-petroleum, well, it still has some petroleum. It's not real, no, this does not petroleum in it. Unlike some of those other waxes. Um, this is a high concentration of carnauba and beeswax. And it's made fairly local from my local, get the wax from a local uh, beekeeper, I guess, what you want to say. Pretty large beekeeper. It's not too small. Now, around my tape, it's going to be thicker because I have a profile to bridge and it dries pretty quick. I'm going to use some cheesecloth. And you can already start to see the difference between wax, non wax. Wax on, or wax off. You knew you were going to, you were thinking it, so I might as well just say it. Everybody does in the workshops. And I'm going to come in here and buff this out. And yes, you can use a car buffer with a giant lamb's wool pad on there if you really want to. Just don't hold it in one place too long because like anything else, you can burn th through the wax. Now, see, it did bring some of it off, little bits of coloring because, I mean, we are rubbing it, but I'm not taking it off. I'm just polishing it out. Okay, and we're going to remove our tape and hopefully the plaster sit up long enough not to damage the plaster. Should really have waited overnight. Yeah, it's pulling some of it off. But for demonstration purposes, actually, if I pulled the tape off the right way, I wouldn't have to worry about that. So you always want to wait overnight. Okay, now I'm really going to polish this out, but look at the difference. Two totally unique looks. Unwaxed, waxed, clear wax is going to do something totally different. The lime seal is going to look completely different. And just stick with me as I keep making these videos. I'm going to make product specific videos so you can actually see the difference between the various products. But this is the Grisello Lime Base Plaster over top of the Quartz Primer. Or I'm sorry, Quartz Base Coat. It's not really a primer. You don't want to use it to prime. I mean, you can use it to prime sheetrock, but it doesn't make sense. I would use a less expensive primer that's specifically designed to prime sheetrock. Get rid of this ugly tape. Sorry, 3M, it's just tape not attractive. It doesn't need to be, it just needs to be functional. Oh, and it's heavy, got a good grip to it. Now for this case, uh, I, I don't know if you noticed, I'm not working with my traditional sample boards. I'm working over a piece of uh, MDF. I'm sorry, masonite, because the lime, if I put this on my traditional sample boards and try to bend it, the lime's going to come flaking off and jing nice big giant pieces because it's not bendable, it's not pliable. It doesn't give like an acrylic. That doesn't matter because on your walls, your walls aren't giving, unless I guess maybe you live in an earthquake prone area, but they're not going to bend and well, twist. I guess they would, but they'll probably crack and fall first. But there it is, real pretty lime. I'm just wiping any dust off. There's no wax on this side. And there it is, Grisello Plaster. My name is Ron. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland. I want to thank you for watching. And hopefully I'll see you in a workshop sometime soon. If you have any questions, feel free to send an email or leave a comment down in the comment section. Thanks for watching.